Switzerland's a crypto nation, but what about Singapore? What about Hong Kong? What about London? That's the topic of our next panel. They'll discuss global competition for a leading blockchain hub. Will Switzerland lead the way? As panelists, I'd like to welcome one by one on stage Jörg Gasser, State Secretary for International Finance at the Federal Department of Finance and the lead for the Blockchain and ICO Workgroup. Welcome, Jörg Gasser. Second, I'd like to welcome Rudy Noser, serial entrepreneur and member of the Swiss Council of State for the Canton of Zurich. Welcome, Rudy Noser. Our third speaker is Nicolas Burer. He's the managing director of Digital Switzerland, the biggest public-private initiative of digital transformation in Switzerland. Welcome, Nicolas. Finally, I'd like to welcome our fourth panelist, Günther Debrou, partner at PwC and head legal. Welcome, Günther. And now the moderator's seat will go to the woman who successfully pushed for the first regulatory solution for Bitcoin custodian in Switzerland. You all know her. Please welcome Olga Feldmeyer to the moderation seat. Enjoy. Oh, what a panel. What a panel. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Um, I think we are all very fortunate to have you here. Uh, just even your mere presence here at the blockchain conference is a statement itself. Um, and that probably wouldn't be even possible several years ago. So thank you very much for joining. Um, I would like to start a conversation uh, with several questions. You know, when we speak about blockchain and, and about you know, how this technology evolves and why this is happening in Switzerland, we bring in too many things into one port. And maybe let's just separate it a little bit. Let's talk about blockchain and ICOs as two separate topics. Um, so let's maybe start with the blockchain. Blockchain is basically one of the uh, new leading technologies, um, among many others, like uh, artificial intelligence and so on and so on. So Switzerland, uh, for many years now, has this leading role, being a really innovative leader in innovation uh, in many rankings, right? And blockchain is basically just one of those technologies, right? So I would like to ask um, maybe you, Rudy, first, let's start with you. How do you see this role of Switzerland as an innovation leader evolving over last years and, and where are we heading? I think, as of course, uh, you, everybody can make her, his mind off of this, but I think in the blockchain technology you have two things, decentralization and uh, you have uh, in a lot of trust functions, and these are uh, and value, and with these things, these are things we are in Switzerland goes very well in line with our culture. So we are interested in value, we are interested in trust, we are interested in decentralization solution. So I think a lot of Swiss people are very kind of uh, get this technology known, and uh, we, we are we don't like these very big fishes in the in the world. I think in the end of the day, so it's something that is near to our culture. That's, I think, also why we are in the regulation part uh, quite fast with these things, because we are used to work with decentralized things. That's my explanation. I don't say that's the right explanation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Nicholas, from your perspective, uh, you're leading uh, uh, the efforts of Digital Switzerland. How do you see this evolving? Do you see more and more uh, innovative companies coming to Switzerland? Is that like, what's the dynamic? So what we see is, uh, is a huge momentum, to be honest. Uh, I'm at Digital Switzerland since two years. Of course, we have ma many assets, many options uh, to grow as a country with innovation, but for sure, that's the one right now. We have some others, robotics, AI, whatever. Let's stay on blockchain right now. Uh, what I see is, is it's quite impressive. Many companies from all over the world look here. Uh, I don't know, maybe half of the people here are Swiss. 
So it's really because I think we have the right conditions, we have you know, an ecosystem, uh, we have a, a both, you know, and we have a, a kind of Silicon Valley 40 years ago. Let's dream a bit. We want to replicate it for blockchain. Is that possible? Will we, we will. get there? I mean, it's the beginning. I mean, if you will have asked the guys in the US 40 years ago, they were, you know, and now they are raising, I don't know, 10 billion per year. And Switzerland, we raised last year 1 billion, almost venture capital, plus 800 millions uh, flew in, in ICOs, ITOs, almost 2 billion. It's only the beginning. I hope in five or 10 years, the ecosystem will be really huge. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, and connected to that, Gunther, you as a lawyer, can you explain us like what actually happened? Why all the ICO, all the companies came here? What is going on? Well, I think one step back, the root of all of this, and, and again, just sitting here, you don't get that view, but it's just amazing to see a full room of people from all over the world, and I think 50% Swiss people that are slightly optimistic. I would be surprised if it was more than 20%. <laughs> uh, I think this would have been unimaginable, but the, the, the core of it is technology, right? And, and uh, it's the blockchain, and this goes back to the roots of Switzerland, where we're always very tech-savvy and so forth. Now, once you've done the tech part, and when you look into innovation theory, this is where it starts, innovation technology. If you want to make it stick, if you want to grow it, to be, uh, have the innovation sort of transcend into the reality, you need money, you need infrastructure, you need other players to come to the equation. Now, when it comes to the funds being added to the technology development, uh, obviously you need a framework that allows for that. Uh, and, uh, you know, when ICOs, which are obviously uh, all the rage right now started. This was a totally new concept. Uh, and you had to start out from a clean slate. Uh, and you still need some kind of rules to do that and some guidance. And in Switzerland, as you have said several times in, in your interviews and so forth, we have the great, great benefit of Switzerland being built around principles-based regulation uh, and, you know, basically allowing things and then have sort of consensus built around it as it evolves. And this allowed this entire thing to start, and it's still driving it, the technology competence, the technology ecosystem, plus a framework that allows us to build things before hitting walls and uh, you know, creating problems. Uh, and this is really the combination of those things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, well, if you look how big the thing became, uh, I think about six billion uh, was raised total capital in last year in initial coin offerings. And probably one third of good ICO companies came here to Switzerland. They were domiciled there, they opened their foundations uh, or uh, any other form of companies. But it's interesting to know from a uh, perspective of, um, from political or government perspective, is that a good thing that we are seeing there? Like, your, what would you say? Is that something that? Uh, you guys see and welcome in um, as a new development. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's, 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 there's, it's not by chance that uh, the situation presents itself as it does. We are, as my colleagues just said, we are very receptive with regard to innovation. We are uh, a tech nation as such. We have uh, the, the best universities in Switzerland, amongst others, uh, find, are located here in Switzerland, not only in the US, so we have the manpower. And we have within the administration some, some persons who are very, very tech affine and we are lucky that these persons are really in the driving seat in order to, in order to make that happen. Not only, with <laughs> not only with regard to what you just said, but also with regard to our regulator, which, is, which plays a, a really decisive role in receiving those companies and, and give them the right advice in order to be able to establish themselves here in Switzerland. That's, that's one issue. So the administration is very close to this development, not only in, in, in Bern on the central level, but also in the canton. Zug, for example, is such an example. Zurich, Zurich is probably following. And they are very, very, very open for this kind of innovation, for this kind of technology, and we are highly welcoming this. It, I, we believe in order to remain at the edge of technolo technology development, we need to be receptive for these new, new, new markets that are, that are growing and that were seeded here in Switzerland. From that point of view, we are very positive with regard to the development that, that we are actually uh, witnessing. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, connected to that, uh, Rudy, maybe like you was one of the most uh, vocal proponents of entrepreneurship and startups here in Switzerland. Uh, and, and we always had this conversation about the funding gap that we don't have enough money uh, to, to fund all those companies. Like all this money and all these opportunities coming in, 
what do you think what Switzerland can make out of it? How would you approach that? <laughs> I think first in the initial coin offering we don't have this gap as far as I see it because you raise a lot of money in the normal startup community we still have a gap but uh, I can say we work very hard to put the foundation in place that they will bring some money in the startup ecosystem uh, with Digital Switzerland with the Federation and all this so I'm quite optimistic that we will have something then in the next few months uh, on this uh, on this area so that you can also make financial rounds let me say between 2 million and 20 million in switzerland uh, with real money also with fiat money not with uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> this is all real money <laughs> we have some dispute normally on this <laughs> uh, with, uh, uh, with swiss francs let me say with swiss francs but the initial coin offering i think works very well there you don't have this uh, value of death also not in switzerland because you're in an international market and i think that's very important for switzerland with this we close a gap that we have in the in the in the real economy with the startup concept in in switzerland yeah Maybe if I just might, might add something to this. Uh, what you are probably referring to is the fact that many of you have issues with regard to, to creating or establishing a, a relationship with a bank. And uh, this is an issue. Uh, we need to address this. Initial coin offering is one, is one point, and that seems to work quite well. But of course, you all need somehow, at least for the time being, uh, bank accounts or a bank, banking relationship. And this is an issue. Now, this is the reason why we, one of the reasons why we have established this, this ICO blockchain working group in order to, to look into that, that issue together with the, with the sector, with the banking, traditional banking sector, with our financial regu regu regulator and us, in order to clarify this question and see where the problem is. Because our, our main goal is, is, is not to, to, to build up barriers to entry, but rather to remove barriers to, to entry into this market. So this is, this is the purpose of, if we, if we start to regulate, it's rather because we, we need to answer some questions that you ask with regard to legal certainty and other issues, and also with regard to the fact that we would like to, to remove barriers to market entry. This is, this is uh, the prime goal with regard to the work that we are currently, uh, ca currently are carrying out. It's not that we want to create a blockchain law or a blockchain regulation. We didn't, we didn't create an email law or an internet law, and our regulation, as it has been said, is, is principle-based, and that will continue to be like that. I think Excellent. it's a very, very important point you're raising here. I think we have legal regulation and we have factual regulation created by the market. So right now we are still facing some technical issues, like we are working uh, on, on numerous ICO projects right now for our clients, and we're facing issues like opening a bank account. So in the past weeks, we've basically been setting up companies by contributing uh, cryptocurrencies for the foundation capital just to get around the blocking accounts things and so forth so i believe uh, it's important that all of the stakeholders are invited that we do uh, explain to people that we take the fear away and that our strong our perceptive swiss established financial services industry also comes to the table yes uh, so maybe one more question to you nicholas um, we say that today we have in switzerland around i guess 300 blockchain startups, if you, I, I try to really find out who are those people, why I don't know about them. So we counted and we met people and it turned out like really here are about 20 to 25 companies. That's a big difference, right? Uh, what do you think, what needs to happen for those companies, not just to open, you know, a domicile company and the mailbox, but really come here and be here? Of course, we don't want to be just a, a tax paradise country. We want the people to come here. I mean, we are talking about decentralized structure anyway, so I don't think people will always be on the same place anyway, anywhere in the world. But still, we want to be more people here. First things we need is regulations. I think we're on a very good way. Uh, the second one, we need more talents. Uh, more talents coming from ETH, EPFL, Rudy, as a politician working on it. Thank you very much. It's hard work, we need more money invested in our top technic universities. And the third one, I think, we need a lucky punch, one or two. Remember Google, the biggest R&D research center outside of the US, so Google Maps, for example, is developed in Zurich. They started maybe 15 years ago. There are now 5,000 people, huge. And they are like magnets. 
from many of the companies. Uh, and we need the same. We need a lucky punch, uh, a big company is either coming here or a new Swiss-based company being huge. We need one or two of them. And the last point, we need to promote it all over the world. And I think we will have the success coming and more people coming here. That's true. Quick comment on this one. <clears throat> Statistics are perceptive, right? So yes, uh, there is not this huge substance there already. But if I just look at the pipeline of ICO projects, of launches we're working on right now, we're seeing in the economy, you don't establish the entire substance before you have the money, right? So usually after the ICO they're coming, but almost all of the uh, clients we're working with, and I guess it's true for all the colleagues in the industry, they start out with a little footprint here, but they have plans. If you look into their white papers, if you look into the business plans to build up substance in Switzerland and then to couple it in a decentralized way with the other areas. So if you extrapolate, and by the way, I believe it's way more than 20, if you look at the new ecosystem map, uh, which was recently launched, uh, I believe it's closer to 100 probably, uh, and you know they will scale up. So we have this great opportunity, as we've seen it in other industries, the Swiss watch industry and others, which came to Switzerland, we sometimes forget that, and then they flourished here. So this is what I'm looking at, and this is what I'm banking on. I agree and disagree with you, because, you know, for me personally, I run a startup, right? And we need a lot of people, we're building up, right? Uh, when you're looking for people, a lot of good developers, uh, marketers, they are not here, right? They are in Kiev or Buenos Aires and so on, right? To get those people here, this is kind of like really one of more competitive advantages for, you know, being a startup here. Rudy, how do you see that? Is there any hope inside that we will uh, <laughs> be able to open the uh, opportunities for startup to grow beyond EU borders? As, as you know, I'm also an entrepreneur and I know it's a pain in the ass to get these people here, to get the permission to get these people here, uh, get, get to work. Uh, I always say two things. Of course, we fight in Bern strong to get more flexibility on it. And I think maybe we can say that in the area of the financial fintech startup, we maybe have now an agreement that we maybe get more flexibility. Also, at least of, uh, of my last interpolation, I'm now uh, willing is to make <laughs> something like a, a mo motion out of it. Uh, that, but uh, you have, to, yeah. Be careful. It means in the Parmaker motion means three years waiting. Other, that means the next two Too years long. will nothing happen. <laughs> so this is one part. Other, but then I say also another message always very clear. You cannot vote 20 years for SVP and then be surprised when there is a situation like it is now. So, so <laughs> please be open to the uh, to the people. <laughs> These are the few Swiss guys, I think. <laughs> Please be open. We have to stay open for the people. We, ha we have a, a, a politic in our country who close the country, and even if there are knowledge brains, other it stays closed. And I think if you go to Australia or Canada, they would look with big eyes what we really do. It. We do some very stupid things here in the country in the moment. But uh, I think the basic is go to vote and vote for the right parties. <laughs> and what you also can, what you can do also, apart from the fact that you need to vote for the right party, is, <laughs> is do some lobbying in, in Parliament. This is not an issue that, that is, is due to, to, to the federal administration. We would like to open up the markets in order to, to attract uh, talents. That's not something that, that where we are in charge of, but it's the federal parliament that is in charge of. They are the ones who write. At the, at the end of the day, they are the ones who write the laws, and they are the ones who have to agree on, on, those, on those regulations and rules or not. So from that point of view, what, even, what might be even on a faster track, well, ne next year we have federal elections, there you can do whatever you want to, but, but lobbying with regard to the fact that you need talents from abroad is something that will have an impact. And, uh, and this needs to be done in order to change the situation. What does it mean? How do we do that? Well, you, exactly. have to tell, you have to tell the parliamentarians who are against the fact that you would like to import more foreign labour that you need it in, and, in, in order, and to explain them what you do and why you don't find the talents here in Switzerland. The first question is, is always, and this is indeed a very justified question, why don't you, why don't you just hire them in Switzerland? Because we have the, the technical uh, universities here in Lausanne and in Zurich Aren't there enough talents? And you need to explain them why there are not enough talents or why, why we do not have the right talents. We have talents, but maybe it's not the talent pool that you require. And you need to explain them 
why you need them, why you need to have to recruit in Brazil or in, in, in China or wherever. Yes. This is what you need to do in order to change the situation. If I may, because I, I'm, we're trying also to meet many, uh, many people from the parliament. Um, uh, I think the blockchain is, is now the reason why it might maybe work. Is there is a concrete uh, project, a concrete ecosystem growing. My experience with uh, some guy from other parties is if you, don't have a concrete, if you don't have concrete numbers, a reason, they will say no. And now there is, a, there is really momentum, and I hope they will understand it, because it's about new jobs, and there is not enough, by far, not enough Swiss talented people to fill up these jobs. And the founders, you guys, if you don't hire the people within a few weeks and you need to wait a month, they will leave the country. So it's, it's about more jobs at the end. And I think the blockchain is maybe one reason in the next week and month we have to fight with. That's true. 100% agree. A very important topic. We need to work on it, but don't be afraid. Because again, we're thinking a bit old world, you know, building factories and plants here or whatever, but we're talking the blockchain world. So I can only see to the third row, but what I'm seeing there is friends who are running uh, exciting, great projects. They have people in Spain, in Scandinavia, in Switzerland, they're working together. They're moving people over here. Again, we're in a decentralized world. But if, as a country, we want to have the maximum benefit of that, obviously we need to be more open. But still, for creating those projects, you know, talent attracts talent, and they will find ways to work together, and they also find ways to come in. Exactly. So, so now we have a new dimension, talent is important, but with a lot of those new business models in blockchain area, the most important uh, breakthrough and, and hurdle today is actually about regulation, right? Because just to give you an example, whenever you touch cryptocurrency, even if your business model is not about cryptocurrencies as such, but you receive or you need to deal in cryptocurrencies, this is where you hit the first regulatory problems, right? And I would like to hear from you, Gunther, as a legal professional, how do you see today the position of Switzerland being having an advantage in this legal framework? How this compares with uh, other neighboring countries or globally? Yes, I mean, I, I'm a lawyer, but I actually have a useful side as well. Uh, that is, I come from innovation theory, and the one thing I learn is that any success, any market is built uh, on, on the combination of factors and uh, the creation of a dominant design. Typically, that's a dominant design around the technology, which is still evolving. We're not quite there. Now, once we meander into the financial space, there is a second element, and that is the regulatory dominant design coming together. If you don't have that, it doesn't work. Look at the Swiss fund space, right? We got wiped off the face of the planet as a fund production hub because we cannot participate in the harmonized EU market. Also, there is no material difference between a Swiss securities fund and a, say, Luxembourg or Liechtenstein use its fund. So if you don't have the regulatory uh, dominant design match uh, the technological one, you have a problem. Now, in this case, we got lucky because we got some players who were at the forefront of the creation of the technology, and we have a regulation that is actually matching and that allows this to flourish. Now we have to be realistic. This is a moving frontier. I believe we are on a very good trajectory by sticking, as you rightly said, to our principles-based regulation, by having a regulator, which, and I need to emphasize, that is not a light-touch regulator. It's a strict regulator, but it's a uh, regulator you can engage with and discuss with. Who has ever heard of a regulator who's doing a roadshow to explain to the industry what's going on with the ICO? And I always say the regulator is the business card of a location. So we have to give them credit. Now it's evolving. We need to watch uh, what is going on in the world so we stay competitive. But mostly what we see is countries are moving towards creating, enabling regulations. And we just launched a, a regulatory map on our webpage where we map all of the countries where they are going. And you see them move sort of from red to sort of yellow orange. So they're being a bit cautious, but they're opening up. So we have to be watchful if new dominant regulatory design elements emerge so we can incorporate them where we have. But otherwise, right now, I believe uh, Switzerland is conceptually leading the charge, and other countries are looking at us and trying to adopt successful models from here. So my hope is we stay the course, uh, we stick to our principles, and we lead the way globally. And as we see the successes, and we also see the mitigation of potential uh, failures uh, working in Switzerland, this will be a workable model. That's true. Uh, and I think another advantage of Switzerland is that uh, it's not a huge country as U.S. with a lot of states and, and huge machinery uh, uh, that produced all the different 
rules. And even if you look, you know, what happened on ICO space, right? There is a state in US, very small state, Wyoming, right? And they issued a very progressive uh, bill on ICOs, right? Uh, and of course, you know, this is, the, the job is not done with this for US because they all now need to agree. It doesn't help you to have, you know, this bill in one small state, right? Uh, and, and this is a, our advantage that we probably can move a little bit more faster forward. And in that regard, York, I would like to ask you, um, you created this working group, ICO and Blockchain Task Force, right? And you are one of the leaders of this group, uh, jointly with Mark Bretson, I guess, from FINMA, right? What is your goal for this task force? And what, what do you would like to achieve there? And also, what do you think, what needs to happen for us to really continue to be leading players in this field? What needs to happen is, is, is quite simple. We need, we need to, to, to ensure legal certainty within, within the community. Uh, this is something that, that, that is required by you, and this is something that we would like to see as well. Legal security, if you, once you have it, um, you also mitigate reputational uh, risks that, that arise from, from, this new, from this new sector, which is quite logic. It's, a, it's young. It's for the time being not, not regulated, which is very good because we, we, can, we, can, we are able to observe in what direction it goes and, and we can, we can uh, take, uh, do the adjustments once they are needed. But um, uh, what we need is legal certainty and legal certainty is, due to the, or, or is, is, is one of the principal uh, bases that you need in order to develop a market. And this legal uh, certainty or this question has been, has been raised by the sector itself. The sector uh, approached us with many questions that need to be clarified because your, your companies, they're about to grow. Uh, they want to have, uh, they want to do it right. We strongly believe that they are not, that these fraudulent, fraudulent uh, uh, business models are not very, are not very common in, in, in Switzerland. So we are very convinced that everybody tries to do its best and they need to know what they are allowed to do and what they are not allowed to do. For the time being, we were able, or FINMA, their financial regulator, was able to, to approach the, the issues on a case-by-case -case basis, but now the, the, the sector is too big. There are too many players in the sector, and we need to answer some principal questions like, how do you treat tokens? What do you do if you fail? Uh, uh, and what about uh, anti-money or money laundering uh, issues? What about uh, KYC? These kind of issues need to be answered, and they need to be answered not very, not very quickly, but thoroughly. And we will take the time to do that. We will analyze the situation. We will exchange views with the sector, with the regulator, with the banks. We analyze the situation, bring up a report to the Federal Council towards the end of the year. And that's the point where we start to think about where do we have to adapt our regulation in order to, to provide this legal certainty. Mm -hmm. So there's not, nothing that will happen overnight. We are thorough. We are maybe not the fastest, but we are thorough. And, and, we, will, and we will do that together with the sector. So this working group will, to, will to work together with the sector in order to, to, to get the expertise out of the sector, out of these companies that need to have this kind of stability. Yes, that's true. And, and I think, um, you know, it's great to have you guys here and, and you're all very progressive people and you certainly want to make this happen. But how about the rest of society, the rest of decision makers, all those people that, that need to support you to be able to bring around really uh, new changes, right? Like how many people in Switzerland even know what are cryptocurrencies or what are the great use cases of blockchain, right? And also probably on the political level, there are not too many people. Do you think it will be, you will have a really hard job convincing your colleagues to, to, to support you and to create this movement? Well, the question is, how many colleagues do I need in order to, <laughs> to, to do what we want to do? No, indeed, I mean, yes. Uh, I, I don't understand everything with regard to blockchain. I'm, uh, luckily, I have an astrophysicist within our state secretary, so he, he's able to explain me what exactly your guys are doing, so this is already an advantage. But, but I don't think it, it really needs to, to convince people 
that this is something that, that is, is useful and this is something that is within our genes of our society. We're very innovative, so everybody is open towards blockchain and, and towards ICOs and, and towards fintech in, in, in general. Uh, what needs to be explained is, is, is how we face and how we deal with the risks. We do not want to have fraudulent activities with Bitcoin or with ICOs where there is no substance behind it. This is something that we cannot, that we cannot afford. We do want to have our, our integrity of the financial marketplace uh, 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 in, in place, and we want to ensure this. So this is, this is probably the most pressing issues where you need to explain uh, what are the measures, what are the mitigating factors that can, that can uh, uh, bring those risks away and those re reputational risks, mitigate those uh, reputational risks. This is what we have to explain. You don't need to explain technology, maybe the basics, but what you really need to, 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 to infuse into the society is that this is something that has a future, it is something that is not illegal, it is not crim criminal, and it, is, it, it will not harm our reputation that we really have to, have to maintain as it is. Yes, but Rudy, what do you think? Will it work out? Like I remember last year, or when, when was it, 2016, uh, as I was part of this Bitcoin company, we were, you know, discussing, like, is that, you know, holding of your private key and providing custody, is that already like, you know, banking services, yes or no? And back then, uh, uh, Franz Grutter submitted a motion to the parliament suggesting that this activity should be taken out of this banking uh, deposit taken uh, institution. And, and, and then uh, the answer was no, this motion was voted down, right? Like, I, I want to understand, once we reach the position where we understand, so for ICOs to develop further, we need the relaxation of those and those rules, right? For example, in comparison to what we have, right? And once we go out to government, and once there is a motion, maybe the next one about that, do you think the chances are high for us to get the broad support and to explain to society and politicians that, yes, this is crowdfunding coming through this technology is a great thing, and yes, let's support it. Is that like probable scenario, or will we struggle there? Your prediction. <laughs> You're asking me, or rather, Both of you. Senator Nolson maybe is, is more appropriate. I, I think you have a good chance to uh, to explain this to the society here in Switzerland in a, in an easy way. Also, I, I did a few tests on Twitter, other how to explain blockchain. We need normal, simple word, and we need it in German, other. But when you explain to someone that you say internet is the way how you share information and blockchain is the way how you share value. Also, if you say this in German, I think my mother will understand what, uh, what is in this sentence. And value is something that we are interested in in Switzerland and we will listen to you. As a, if you explain it in a way where, you, uh, where the Swiss people understand what you go to explain, then it's very easy to get uh, interest, maybe to get a majority who is very interested in, because the middle education here in the country is very high. But when you explain it in a technical way, like I heard it on a few weeks ago from a professor, other, then I'm not quite sure if you can convince the, uh, more than your community. Other. I think that's the question. Break it down easy. Bring, bring, look for some middle, middle people who can make the translation, and then maybe it, it will work. So I'm, I'm sure that... And then you have, of course, another problem. Other, I think a lot of the etablished uh, financial big companies, they are not very amused about, uh, about these upcoming things here. And for me, it was also a little bit surprising that all the supporters of this conference, no one of them belongs to the established uh, financial community at the end of the day. There we have maybe also to close the gap. So I would also propose to you that you work together with the Banki Vereinigung in Switzerland and so on, very close way, so, so that, that you get one ecosystem in the financial market and not three or four or five different. I think that would also be very important for to get a good, uh, broad support in the community um, in this. And the, the, the third point, you have also to understand you achieve already a lot. Also, at least you have a, a secretary of state here on the, on, on the stage. We have a, a working group. 
We have of, of federal level different working group. We have uh, with FINMA a lot of discussion. Um, finally, we get an acceptance of this uh, Bitcoin company here in Switzerland. We, we worked hard on it, but we get it. Uh, as I think we achieved already a lot. As we are world uh, leaders in criticize our country, but on the other side, I think we achieve already a lot. That's true, and we will continue on this path, right? I think this don't over-engineer it. You, we don't have to worry yeah. about convincing the population. For me, this is a deja vu. I'm a kid of the 90s, and I started as a venture capitalist, and I remember when I had discussions with my father in the end 90s about the internet, right? And it was actually called PTX at the time, and he said, this is just about pornography, and nobody will use it other than dirty minds. And today, I believe everybody is clear. Did I just say pornography on stage? Sorry about that. It's just amongst here, right? No streaming here. No, but today it's in every aspect of our life, and I'm absolutely certain that the blockchain will grow into every aspect of our life, and society will just embrace it by, by seeing it. So we are not at the tipping point yet. We're in the early adopters phase, and by doing good things, by showing the benefits, we will win the trust and the hearts of, uh, of society. That's true. Okay. It's a, it's a, please. Uh, if I may, just, it's, it's about convenience. So. As soon as we have good applications, B2C mm -hmm. maybe more, because right now it's a lot of B2B still. As soon as you have good applications and more convenience, they will love it. That's it. So as a closing words, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for your support and for all the great work that you're doing on different fronts, right? Um, this is how we are growing as a crypto hub. and and receiving more and more importance and, and attention from all over the world, right? And you don't hear, but we hear it. All the companies in crypto space, they come to us, they are looking up to us with a big hope, right? And this is us here saying that, yes, the hope is there and we're moving forward and we're just getting started. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, everyone.